Hi, so we're back and into 2024. I hope you had a fantastic end of the year and I'm finally back. And I'm so excited because I'm starting the, this year's video with a free instrument by Venus Theory that's called Noctua. You probably have heard of it. I will be linking his video in the description because he, be, he gives a great rundown on how to use it. This video is more about ways of handling or dealing with it that are not shown on that video. So let's jump right into it. My name is Juan Chis, and this is the example that I did for today. So the plugin itself is really easy to handle or to work around it. <clears throat> I will be also linking in the description so you can just download it and play with it. What you will usually be doing is you will open your Ruby workstation, you will double click here and you will load any of the presets that you want from Noctua and you will just start playing with it. The thing is that it has three sources, one, two, and three, and they are playing at the same time. And remember, a really small rundown if you have never seen this instrument before is that here you can select which source you are affecting on the filter, on the ADSR, and the tremolo, and the saturation section. You have small and different parameters for each of the sources like pan, uh, tuning, pitch, pitch or tuning, however you want to call it, and two auxiliary effects that you have available as well. And you have also an envelope available for your filter. So that's really good. You have a sequencer, you have a whole effect section where you can go deeper. But this time I'm going to talk about how to use the four parts that you have available in the UV workstation. This works for any UV workstation instrument that you want to build. But for this Noctua work, I feel it works really, really well. So instead of just opening one and playing, because I don't have a lot of control on balances because I have all of the faders here. And maybe I want to be looking a lot more into my mixer and cleaning up with some EQ or something. The idea overall, the concept around this is you will have three MIDI sources that will be feeding one single plugin and you will be recording multi-track output out of that plugin, right? I also have a video on how to record your drums multi-output. If you want to check it out, it will be in the description down below. So whenever you open your Noctua or your workstation, these parts will be completely empty. So you can go into the multi and you just double click any of the parts and you can load any of the presets. You can use the solo and mute button so you can actually listen to the preset itself. So not everything is playing at the same time. And once you have selected three different ones that you like or four different ones that you like, the easiest way to do this is go back into the main one. And this step is really important. So for part one, if I'm using part one, one for my subs or my bass, I will have all of the filter amplitude and tremolo controls selecting the third source, in this case the sub, and as you can see part two is part two on every single one, and part three is having source one. I did it that way because bass makes more sense in the first place for me. You, you do it as you like, it, it really doesn't make any difference. If you're using a MIDI keyboard, for example, I'm using a Killup by Arturia, in different brands, you usually have some sort of control where you can modify how is that controller interacting MIDI-wise and what is it inputting into the DAW. So for example, this fader is is going through channel one and it's emitting a CC number 20 and it's controlling the filter base, for example, and my keyboard is channel selected in the user section. So I would probably use this button right here. So I will probably be using, and many of your keyboards will probably have this, some sort of MIDI channel button. And on top of the keys, you will have a one through 16 numbers. And if you hit that MIDI channel and then click one of those keys, it will switch into MIDI channel one, two, three, four, five, all the way up to 16. I modified this, I turned that into a template, into a preset, and I sent that to my user two patch that's selected with my pads. And now my keyboard is answering that way. This way I can have track one listening to input MIDI channel one, so it, does, so it doesn't get in the way. And this track listening to MIDI channel two, and this one listening to MIDI channel three. 
That way, that's already cleaning up the whole issue. You can set them all, all inputs, but you will be sending the same signal three times at the same time, so it really doesn't make any sense. So as it's really straightforward, you really have this good to go. Then you have to make a send. Remember that you can just drag into another track. In my case, I have to disable the audio because that's my default state, and I will send only the MIDI one or through three, four, five, blah, 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 right? And now I have all of the MIDI sends right here. And, I, and as you can see, it says MIDI channel one, two, and three. So whenever I play on my keyboard MIDI channel one, MIDI channel two, and MIDI channel three, I have three sounds available from one single keyboard. <clears throat> if you have different keyboards, you can set them up to different MIDI channels, or if you're playing with a friend, you can play different instruments at the same time using one single instance of Workstation. How am I monitoring this? The track that has the UV Workstation that's right here on, the, on white doesn't need to go to the master send. Remember that you can hit right here and disable it, and you can just hold Option or Alt if you're on Windows, and this first LED will turn on and off, letting you know that it's going through the main output. It's going straight into the master, that's all the way up here. And for you to be able to monitor it and record it, we will make three new tracks. Remember that you can just drag from the send section into another track, and I will be using audio from one and two into one and two. One and two is always the main input and main output of the tracks. Please remember that. And I will also be uploading the track template of this. So you only have to set it, set it up once or check if it works on your DAW properly once and it's set up all of the times you want to, do, to use it. And in the UV workstation, we will have to check here. That's the only thing that could go wrong that we have 17 channels out because this plugin is 34 out and you can check that in the plugin pin connector. So I will be sending the part one through throughout two, as you can see up here, and it has left and right. Part two goes out through three, into three and four, and so forth. If you want to make it symmetrical, you can just start on the second MIDI channel, output two, third MIDI channel, output three, and so on. You don't need as many channels, uh, probably you would only use eight outputs if you're using the four parts within the, available within the workstation. And now you're sending this here. In the mixer, you have a mixer, as I said already, with panning, volume, and so on. <clears throat> and now you are ready, ready, ready to record this and to play around with it. So if I only play this first layer, As you can see, this is only sending MIDI channel one and it's only playing one of the layers of the instruments. I have all of these armed because I could be playing them from my keyboard, but if you're writing the MIDI notes, this also works. And if you want to record this to another track, you will have the new track armed and right click on the arm button and you'll have this option selected. So monitor input, record output, because that's recording what's coming out of the track itself in a stereo format. And the output mode is pre-fader post effects, because that way the fader doesn't affect the level of recording. And the input set to known, because you're not trying to record your audio interface, you're trying to record a virtual instrument, right? You could also set this up as a render time selection action right here. So what will happen is that Whenever you hit that action, this will happen. So what will happen is that you will end up with this muted track. That's the one that you used to, to render the time selection and the new tracks with the audio on if you want to mess around with it. For this video, we're trying to figure out ways to jam around a single MIDI loop and we can perform over our, over our own patches and presets. So if you have this set up as I showed you, what you can do is just hit record. And you can just fiddle around with the plugin and record that, and that's already available for you to use. That works really, really well. 
But as usual on this channel, we can always go deeper and deeper and deeper. Let me know if, if you like these kind of videos that are kind of in depth. Be happy to keep on making them. If not, I can make some sort of introductory video and then a deeper video. So that way you can record three MIDI sources that are going through different MIDI channels into one single plugin in three different tracks. I hope that's clear so far. I hope I didn't go too fast, but we can go deeper into this same idea. For example, on my mixer right here, if I go into options and themes and theme adjuster, I can go into the mixer control panel and I can show FX parameters on my mixer. And you will see that I have these blue knobs right here that also show up on my arrangement view. I have the advantage that my screen is really wide horizontally because it's an ultra wide screen, but and that's why I have my mixer on the side. I know many people have it at the, at the bottom, so maybe this these knobs here make a lot more sense. But the idea is that I'm controlling with these knobs inside the inside of the plugin without having to open the plugin, right? Let me show you how to set this up. In this case, pretty much in the workstation, whatever you right click, this new window shows up. And this new window lets you set up any parameter that you right click to host automation. You have 128 assignable parameters to control from your host. And I have all of the levels of my outputs within the mixer set up to host automations. That way, whenever I right click right here, I can access all of the parameters of any of my plugins and show them as an app. That could be useful for so many things. So play around with it. If you like it right there, something like the filter without having to go inside of the plugin and just using a lot more your ears without having to look at the frequency or whatever, it's sometimes faster to have it right here. And that's one way of going deeper into it to have those parameters available if you're done fiddling around with your patches, change your, changing your sources and whatnot. Maybe you want to change the frequency filter for your bass and setting up delay sense and reverb sense and you want to have them all of them here at hand. Another way to do this is, how, as I was saying, is I'm using a Keylab by Arturia and this first fader I have it set it up, as I said, through channel one, through MIDI CC number 20, because it's undefined. And I'm using that through MIDI channel one. This is really important because this is going to access part one. That's my base. And that's why that's the only part that will listen to that fader. And I will right click the frequency and you will see that I have the MIDI CC controlling that parameter specifically. So whenever I move my fader, and I have my track armed listening to all MIDI channels or only to, to my Arturia Keylab. If you have another MIDI controller, you can have another MIDI, MIDI controller just for handling and fiddling parameters. If you have this bigger keyboard and you're not using that part of your keyboard, use one single thing. And I'm going to listen to all of the channels of the Arturia Keylab. So now, whenever I move my fader, I have control of my frequency. See? It's as easy as that. I made it as concise and as short as possible because the first version of this video was way too long. And I hope this opens up a way of thinking how to perform on your many instruments. Uh, Noctua is a fantastic instrument. I'm, I've been really enjoying it, making and learning with it. But again, what I think is really interesting is that maybe you want to set up the automation mode of these tracks right. And whenever you're performing with your knobs and your faders, all of the changes are being saved in automation lanes. And you're also recording the audio of it in real time. And that makes it a unique experience on how to perform on a multi-track electronic instrument. And I love that idea. And if you want to learn anything else from Reaper, remember that all of the channels are up there of the Reaper Squad will be linked in the description. But you can set this up in three different instances. It doesn't consume more CPU. I tested it. Track 14 and track 18 are my plugins. So I have three instances in track 14 and one single instance with three parts in the track 18. So as you can see, pretty much the same. It's not even worth the effort work it to try so many ways. So we're starting 2024 really heavy in these kind of videos. I will also be making some 101 videos from my own point of view. There are more than enough videos like that, but it's my own point of view on how to teach and for people to start learning about audio production and laying down their, their, their own ideas in, in the DAW. 
Also a couple of great tips on music production and as usual, some deeper videos on Reaper. And if you like these kind of videos, be sure to comment, like, and subscribe, hit the notification bell, and all of those things that people on YouTube say. In the meantime, straight from Mexico City, my name is Juanchis, and thanks for listening.